Yeah, we're good. All right. Okay, now let's get started and get the team to uh, introduce themselves. All set? We're all set. All set. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, I'm Elias Hall. Here's Travis Cooper, Mike Deegan, uh, Levi Lewis, and Greg Webb. And we're going to present you our uh, virtual campus tour and give you progress for us. Uh, okay, our uh, project stakeholders here. We have uh, Ms. Kelly Chastain. She's our client. Elizabeth, uh, I just introduced you. We are the we are the developers, like it or not, <laughs> and uh, technology advisors were uh, Dr. Allen, back there in the corner, uh, Dr. Zhao, and uh, sure, Mike, uh, he's not here. He's not here. Right. <coughs> and uh, Greg can go over the problem definition. Problem definition. Um, recently, often students are interested in applying to Mercer, and but they're unable to attend the tour of the campus. Um, three reasons because of this is either because they're um, missing the tour time, or either they're missing the scheduled event time, or they just live too far away. So the admissions office requires a virtual tour which can supplement for actual tour of the campus so that the prospective students can still learn more about the campus. Now we're going to the functional requirements. Uh, this is a listing of the functionality of, left, of the things that were asked for that we got that we gathered from our uh, from our meeting with the client and from the information they sent us. Um, we had an information page. We wanted, wanted the functions for it to be able to capture some information from the visitors for analytical purposes and store those uh, in a database so they can be reviewed later by the admissions office. We were just doing capture, we weren't doing any of the analysis. Uh, then we had the, the map page. The basic functionality of this, we uh, found need just to be to mark the different points of interest that needed to be visited, uh, show routes between them if the people are actually on the campus, moving between them as opposed to sitting at home just viewing the information, and provide links to uh, our media pages that actually have the information about these points of interest. We also had a sort of optional functionality of GPS location tracking while they're on campus to kind of give them an idea of where they are in relation to the buildings they're trying to visit. Then we have our media page. This was basically just uh, looking for a template that had a way to view different types of media, videos, pictures, uh, play audio, um, just different types of media about the different locations that you're visiting. Um, we definitely, uh, we set down that we, basic functionality is to play video, play audio, um, provide textual information, uh, be able to display photos and possibly embedded Flickr account for a slideshow. And then, last functionality for this is to provide a link back to the map so that you can continue on the tour. And then we had some non-functional requirements that we came up with. We wanted a uniform style across the pages. So that way you could tell that you were still on the website, uh, still taking the virtual campus tour. And we wanted a branding that kind of marked it as a Mercer Productions aid and link it to the admissions office as well. Uh, also, we wanted all the media pages to pretty much have the exact same look every time, just have a main screen in the middle that uh, received an updated um, type of media based on the selection of the user. We also want uh, usability. We want uh, very clear directions uh, for the links of where they're going, wherever they click the link. Um, we also wanted a steady flow in the tour of the map so that as you go from one place to another, you can easily tell which one you're supposed to go to next. Um, we need a good performance for, and by that we mean uh, short load times for the pages. We don't want to have to load 80 images on a page. So we want as short as load time as possible. We don't want the, we define that as the user realizing that the page is still loading, which is, we guess, about five seconds or less would be a good load time. Uh, we also want uh, reliability. Uh, by this we mean 
good database queries uh, and a solid database structure so that way we're not trying to query for something that isn't there. And that's in about the entirety of our non-function requirements. Um, so Elias is going to give us an analysis okay. of our yes. um, So to access the database, we uh, decided on using PHP. Um, we're using MySQL as our, uh, our, our database. It seems to be uh, robust enough for what we need to do. Um, we're using JavaScript for a lot of things to embed our files into what we need. Um, Levi's going to go over and talk about this a lot later. I'm um, talking about the info boxes and how we use that with our maps page. Um, and then we're using HTML5 as new features that, uh, that we can make use of um, with our videos. Travis kind of touched on this earlier, um, but here for our non-functional requirements, um, the media that we put in place, we can make sure that we set it in a uniform manner so that it will be usable so the users you know what to do. The user's going to know on their smartphone you know, where to find everything that they need. I mean, they're, they're not going to have to search and you know, look around every time, every time everything's going to be in a, a natural place. Uh, same thing in the layout, we clear on the containers when necessary. In order to decrease a lot of times, one thing we can do is make sure our file sizes are perfect for screen size. So if you have a four inch screen, you're going to have not a picture that's two megabytes because that doesn't make any sense. Um, and then MySQL, as I said earlier, it's a yeah, robust relational database management system. Um, and then we're going to make sure we use the proper database techniques when we store these two images in four point four bits. So this is our first idea for the uh, multi-stream and analytics page. Um, it was the original sign was used to um, have two pages for the welcome screen and analytics. The welcome page would introduce the user to the application and tell them how to use it. And once they click the start uh, icon here, we go to the analytics page, where we collect information that the uh, admissions office would like to use for their records. Um, the, the, um, for example, we have first name, last name, high school graduation, year, and email address. And when we click the go button, it would then go on to the form. All right, and this is our first design as far as the tour goes. Um, they focus more around the media than the actual tour. Uh, it's designed to be a universal format for each location. So no matter where you were on the campus floor, it would always look similar to this. The top would have some sort of carousel that would have all the media types, whether it be images or video. And in the center, it would have the main one that the user selected. So if they click one of these media types at the top, it would bring it down here and make it larger so the user can see it. It also contains some text about the, um, the current location, or possibly text that um, talks about the image that the user has selected. Uh, the uh, page also have back and next icons, so the, uh, or links so that the user can iterate through the entire tour. And if they wanted to see the map at any time, they would click this icon, or a hyperlink, and it would bring up a pop-up video of the map of campus. Um, the pros of this are, of course, universality, so no matter where you are, it looks the same. And it usually like the smartphone on the screen is real estate well, meaning that there's not really any space on the screen that is wasted, which is very important when it comes to smartphones. The cons of this we found were, or when we talked to the client, whereas it didn't flow with the map page well, it didn't have a tour feel. It basically looked like you were on a site talking about Marshall, not actually taking a tour. So we decided to modify it. This is a more, up, uh, more uh, closer to the design we actually chose. Uh, it was, uh, once you got through the analytics page, it would come to a map page like this. And uh, basically, it would paths from each one location to the other. And when you click on these little markers, it would open up a page similar to that of the media page that we uh, had before. So, it, um, so uh, it would, uh, yeah. So, the pros of this were it implements the universality of the first design, but it still has a map page flow to it. Uh, the cons to it is the design may be bulky because we have to use some things like either uh, Canvas or Google uh, Maps API, which have a lot of things to load. Uh, not to mention uh, creating all the path between points. So that was one of our concerns about this design. Okay. Okay. I'm actually going to talk about our current design. And currently, we, our, our current design has three pages. It starts off with the analytics page, where it will collect information about the user voluntarily, and then they can proceed on to the map page from that. We use this forming. It's a big button for submitting information and that will submit the information. 
list of points from the database, and that will be used to actually construct the paths between the markers. It, clicking on the marker will open up an info box about the map, and or about the place, and then you can press a link to go on to the media page, which are related with the, related with the Our media page is it, it's similar to what we had before. And it's, it opens up in a new form, so going back to the when map page is just you clicking the X in the top of the corner. Uh, we start off with a header, just identifying the place that we're, this is describing. And then we have our carousel of images and Hopefully it will contain other media as well. well can, it, we can click the link to have them show up here. And then below that we have text describing the actual place. Alright, um, now we're going to go in and show you the actual version that we have right now, and then we're going to go into the goals. So I'm going to start by showing the working uh, form page. Um, so. So here is the version of the uh, form page we currently have. So I'm just going to get a uh, oh. uh, so we can show the uh, email form. Okay. So when we enter our information here. It automatically emails the uh, information here to the email uh, address we specified. Uh, originally, we had it doing it using a mail to tag and HTML, but the problem with that it opened up the, client, uh, the user's email address, and we felt like that was an unnecessary step. So we automatically send it using the server. So we click submit, and then if we go back to here, we should very soon get an email from the server containing the name, first name, last name yearly graduated, and their email address. We decided to keep it this format in case the admission office wants to use it in an Excel format. It would be very easy to implement it into their uh, records. So. And then when we're done with that, we click here to view a map of Canvas. So, uh, Michael, do you want to talk about the Sure. Yeah. You can. Yeah. Or, um, I'll navigate you. So. Basically, it's regular Google Maps with points which we specify. And if you click one, it will bring up the image and the info box, and you can click the link to go to the media page describing that. Uh, this is a media page. Uh, me and Greg and last group uh, working on this. Uh, haven't gotten as far as we like. We it took us a while to debug some pretty simple stuff, but there's not a lot of debugging options when it comes to JavaScript and HTML. And uh, it took us a while to figure out where the bugs were. The main bug we had originally was the switching of the pictures. We're uh, dynamically adding the event listener to a list that we also dynamically created from. Uh, in the future, it will be a database. Right now, we're just put a bunch of uh, things in a JavaScript list and I then loaded them into an HTML list and created event listeners for the dynamic list. So that way, no matter how many media we have per page, if we have a dynamic, uh, we have like five for one, 20 for another, we can dynamically allocate listeners for, <coughs> sorry, listeners for each one so we can handle all the switches to the main uh, display here. Uh, something we currently are working on right now is getting the carousel set up so that way it only displays a certain number and has scroll things. You can scroll back and forth between them so you only see a set number at a time.